Okay, everybody, we've got Chris Colfer here. Chris. Tony, what happened to Chris? Hey, can you hear me? Oh, now I can hear. <laughs> Do you like my look? Are you Elton John? <laughs> no, no, I'm Where's Waldo? <laughs> Where's Waldo? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, you're adorable. It's, it's so good to see you. I know, it's so good to see you. I miss you. I miss you too. How are you holding up? I'm good. I'm really doing well. And, and Sunny's yeah. excited to see you too. Oh, hi, Sunny. How are you doing? He's, he misses <laughs> you. How are your dogs? They're good. They're good. They're, they, I think there's a there's like a squirrel or something outside, so they'll probably be joining our interview. <laughs> That that's always good. And hmm. I keep thinking about your sister. How's Hannah? She's doing great. She um I just got to see her recently. Uh -huh. Um and uh yeah, no, she, she's doing good. Everyone thankfully everyone's everyone's healthy in my world. Thank 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 yeah. God, knock on wood. Right. Well say hi to everybody and Will and everybody for me. So tell us about your new book, A Tale of Witchcraft. I just, I'm so excited about it. It, it. I'm sure that you've sold a zillion co copies already, right? Uh, I, I, not, not quite a zillion, but 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 it but it did really well. It's um it's still on the it's still on the bestsellers list, thankfully. That's um, yeah, it debuted at number one, and uh, it's 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 still up there. So um yeah, it's um a tale of witchcraft is uh, the sequel to um, my uh, book, A Tale of Magic, which came out last fall. Right. Um, and um, this one, it, it's, it's, you know, this is a, a brand new series for me. And um, uh, it's a really uh, very, even though it's written for kids, it, it, it really uh, goes over some pretty adult topics. Um, uh, right. In this series, everything is an allegory for something. Uh, so in A Tale of Magic, magic was an allegory for oppression. Um, and in this new book, A Tale of Witchcraft, um, everything, everything that's related to witchcraft is an allegory to mental health. So um, hopefully I'm, I'm not only telling kiddos like a, a good like fantasy, fantasy, uh, fantasy story, but I'm also um, helping them through um, some, some tough times too. Oh, how, how, give us an example of how you do that. Well, you know, for, for me, like, like for me, anxiety and depression has always felt like a curse. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's no one's fault that it's there. It's, um, you know, you can't, you, you can't really control when it comes or, or when it goes, but, um, uh, it, it really feels like almost like an outside force is, is what's, um, affecting your mind. And, and so in this book, um, one of the characters is cursed, um, with, um, with, with, with this, with this curse that makes her, um, think very negative things and it mm -hmm. makes her, um, uh, doubt her, her loved one's intentions and affections for her. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the longer that, that she goes on this journey in the book, the worse and worse the curse gets. And she, the whole, the whole, the whole book, she thinks that it's something to do with her, that something is broken inside of her. And, and the very, very end, you, you, she, she discovers it's this curse that has been placed on her. Um, and then once she finally is able to identify it for what it is, she's finally able to help herself. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, you know, that's interesting because a lot of people take responsibility for things that are broken within their lives mm -hmm. when it's really not their fault. Right, right. There's there's so much shame and blame when it comes to mental health when um, there shouldn't be. And, and I, I hope if I can teach kids that at a young age, they'll, they'll have much more um, uh, happy fulfilling lives and they won't be afraid to to ask for help and one of the biggest things in this book is is uh sometimes asking for help is just as heroic as giving it that's a big uh, a big theme in this book oh wow that's really it it a lot of people don't know how to ask for help mm -hmm. right of, right so yeah any any i think any story that that uh takes away the shame and self-blame and self-hate from from mental health and and from vulnerability, really, just in general, I think um, uh, is a is a is a. I, I think that's that's a, a story that kids really need to hear right now. But everything you do always has a healing component to it. Mm -hmm. Everything you do, every everything you write. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I certainly try. Um, I, I I always try to. Um, 
put in some kind of lesson or moral or or just something to help to help someone, e even if it's just like escapism um, with, with, with with a good story. Um, uh, cause I, I know like when I was a kid, like, oh my gosh, like, like times are tough. My sister was sick. Um, my family had no money. Um, I, I, I was a, 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 a gay boy in a, in a closet of town. Like, so it's not, times were tough when I was younger and, and I really, really relied on, on books to, to, uh -huh. um, to help me. So I'm trying to like repay the favor now that I'm, now that I'm getting into my, uh, my, my adult years. I'm so, so proud of you, Chris. Oh, you thank said, you so much. I'm, I, it's just amazing what you've done with your writing because I don't know if people know this, but Chris started writing when he was how old? Seven? About seven, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah my, uh, do you want me to tell that story? <laughs> I want you to tell the story of, uh, again, please, about your grandma because it's my favorite yeah. story about you. Oh, it's a great story. So um, I um, tried writing my, my first series, the Land of Story series. I, I tried writing... Uh, I tried writing that when I was uh, about seven uh -huh. and uh, writing a novel is very, very difficult when you're seven. Right. Um, and uh, I used to like write out like chap chapters, which were actually just really were just pages. <laughs> and I would, I would ride my bike to over to my grandmother's house and she would edit it for me. She was my first editor. And uh, if she liked it, she would keep it in a stack by her chair. But if she didn't like it, she would crumble it up and throw it away um and and uh that was a really that was really tough love but it really got me prepared for the publishing world right uh, and i used to cry and and i used to say grandma i'm never gonna make it i'm never gonna be a writer and and she said christopher i i think you should wait till you're done with elementary school before worry before worrying about being a failed writer <laughs> <laughs> it was best advice i think um uh, best writing advice anyone's ever got, given me <laughs> i loved your grandma I'm so yeah. she loved you too. I'm so honored that I got to meet her and hmm. see where you grew up, boy, oh boy, that really was a closeted neighborhood you were in. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that you were able to to branch out and be who you are and what you are. And I think that if people hide it have to hide and be in a closet about anything in their lives, they're never really able to create the best they can be mm -hmm. absolutely they're not free to to be the best they can be at whatever it is they do mm -hmm. right so, right and uh, it, it's so important for for people who live in in um communities like that if, if you see someone young who has potential but they're they're just being marginalized it's so important to you know, you go over and encourage them because it could be the only encouragement they ever get. Um, right. And if you're a young person and you're in that town, it's so important to like try to find your try to find your mentors because they're there if you look closely enough, and and they will they will be they will save your sanity. I I, I also think that your character on Glee helped people with that too. Oh yeah, absolutely yeah yeah. And that that was that was been such such my my privilege privilege of a lifetime to 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 be the the face and and mouthpiece of that for for so many years yeah i mean you're yeah it's so special it's 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 legendary even though you're only 20 30 i forgot how old you are oh no you're can i say how old you are you you can it's okay you can say it's it's on my imdb well, because I still, <laughs> I still have your 30th birthday present oh you do well yes. oh you do yes you we didn't we didn't accomplish it yet but we're i'm taking you to the integratron it's going to be all ours Oh, I cannot wait. If you want to go sooner, mm -hmm. we can go sooner because they're very careful there. If you want oh, to cool. go with just a few people. Yeah, yeah. Will and, I mean, if you do, they'll, they they will do that for us. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have some friends that, that, that just, just bought a house in Palm Springs and are dying for us to come out. So uh, I should make, we should make a big weekend out of it. Okay, that would be really, really fun. Okay, well, we'll figure that one out. So, so a tale of witchcraft is about a curse. So, do you know anyone that have in real life really had a curse on them? I mean, I don't know the uh, the people in um, uh, the people who uh, uh, raided King Tut's tomb. That's pretty suspicious. Oh, you're right. Wait, tell us you the know? story about that. 
So um, actually, the um, uh, it, it, I, I I could be I could be mistaken. So 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 please don't don't. Uh, Didn't you take that? me there? Didn't you take me there? Did I take you there? We I might have to, taken you there. We went to a museum. Oh yes, yes, we saw the King Tut. Yeah, the the, the uh, exhibit here in L.A. Yeah, you took me. Yes, yeah. So um, the story is, um, and I could have some facts wrong. So uh, so forgive me. I'll be very embarrassed. But um. Actually, the you know you know Downton Abbey. I love. The, the, he loved. Of course, Downton. of course, yeah. So the real place is called High Clear Castle, and the actual man, uh, the Lord, whatever his name was, who actually lived there, he uh, was an explorer who uh, would go and raid tombs in Egypt and uh, would bring back all of the artifacts to to London. And King Tut's tomb was one of the tombs that he and his crew opened. Um, and when they opened it, he and all the men, all the aristocrats that were linked to it, they all started dying of very mysterious causes. Um, and so really? people think it was the the, the curse of, of, uh, of King Tut that, that did it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, oh, look, there's a photo. Thanks, Tony. Oh, good job, Tony. Yeah. Wow. It's really, that... it's really, it's really, um, uh, it, it, it's one of those where like, I don't know if I necessarily really believe in curses, but um, uh, I, I, that's one where I'm like, well, there might be, there might be something well, there. They, you know, there's, there's legends in different places, like in Hawaii, mm -hmm. one of the volcanoes, I think it's Mount Pele, mm -hmm. that they say if you take a rock from there, that you, that you'll be cursed. Mm -hmm. And I actually know somebody who did that and had really bad, bad luck. Oh. And so I don't know. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the, um, uh, like the petrified forest. You're not supposed to take the, uh, you're not supposed to take the wood. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay to take a rock from Joshua Tree, though. One yeah, rock. I think that's okay. <laughs> I, th I think the rocks around your place are, are fine. I think you're good. <laughs> we tell people what we did. <laughs> What's, oh, oh, in Joshua Tree? Yeah, we went to Joshua Tree. I took them at midnight or eleven o'clock. It was pitch black, pitch black out. It was really. To, we went to see if we could find UFOs and see the stars. And <laughs> I, I have rocks around my home, and so they, they say legally you can in California take two hundred pounds worth of rock if you want. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so Kristen will kind of we kind of borrowed a rock from Joshua Tree. So I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I love that we borrowed a rock. Yeah, we borrowed it. I mean, you know, yeah. really, when you think about it, everything in life, we we're just borrowing. We're never we we don't take it with us when we cross over. Everything's borrowed. Yeah, and and you know, with with, with the tectonic plates, like that rock will end up in Joshua Tree again someday. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you are funny. So, well, I am just so happy that you could be on the show today. Thank you so much. And how can people get your book? And tell us, what, where, how, what's the best way to get a hold of you? I mean, I know you're on social media, but what's the best thing? Oh, gosh. Uh, I, I think, yeah, just, uh, just my Twitter, um, which is at Chris Golfer. Uh, my Instagram, which is at Chris Colfer also. Um, and uh, my books are sold pretty much everywhere. Books books can be sold. Um, you find they're in uh, 35 countries, I think. So, um, 35 countries? I'm 35 countries, yeah. Um, and then if you go to, if you go to thelandofstories.com or ataleofmagic.com, all the, all the info will, it will be on there. Are more books now being sold on Amazon and Barnes & Noble and online and stuff because of the pandemic? I think so. I think I think there's been a big um, uptick uh, for, with online sales in the pandemic. But um, uh, with, with my recent tour, like we 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 do we try really hard to support like the independent bookstores. Um, so yeah, so we so we did a bunch of those um, uh, because you know I, I it, it's great to order them, but I, I feel like there's some magic in a bookstore. You know, like but to, to walk into a room and have all of those stories in one place. That's just that's I, magic. So we we got to do what we can to keep it. I agree. I mean, when I go, when I would travel, I would, uh, when I wanted to just relax, I would go into a bookstore and I like the bookstores that serve coffee or tea mm -hmm. and go and sit in a corner in a chair and read. 
Yeah. Oh God. I, it used to be my, my, my safe haven when I was a kid. Right. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's so comforting and so peaceful. Mm-hmm. So comforting. well, thank you so much for being here. You, I, I, I will find Waldo wherever you are. <laughs> Yeah, he's one of, my, one of my favorite literary characters. So I, I should I should tell your audience I I just did a um an event uh for with the L A L A City uh, or the L A Public Library for kids. That's why I'm that's well, why I'm dressed I, up like Waldo. You were Elton John. That's why I asked if you were Elton John. I didn't know. Who but you, you so, this is okay. This is this is this is proof that you are psychic because which which is hilarious to me sometimes because just before I got on. I was on Instagram joking that I look like Elton John. I mean, I don't really look like Elton John, but with the glasses. Oh, with the glasses, I guess, huh? Yeah. Who else you look like? You know who you Casper? look like? No, <laughs> you look like. Um, oh God, uh, God, I have a mental block. Uh, the um, Harry Potter. Oh yeah, I get that a lot too. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. look like Harry Potter. Okay, Stripes so and glasses. let's make a plan to go to the Integratron, and then mm-hmm. maybe you'll come back another time, and we'll talk about if we see any UFOs flying around. Oh, God, I hope so. That would be amazing. It would be so much fun. Anyway, mm-hmm. I miss you, and, and, and I miss our dinners, and I, I went to the place that we always go to when I was in L.A. a couple weeks ago. I had to go in to, just for a regular appointment, and mm-hmm. I picked up like a bunch of the food and I brought it home and <laughs> froze some of it. <laughs> oh, I, we, we've been, we've been ordering cause they, they deliver now. So uh, we, we, we get oh. it like probably once every week or so. And I think about you. I, oh, that's so sweet. I'm not telling everybody where it is because we go and we take a booth in the back and then we just kind of like, yeah, uh, we just yeah. sit there for four hours and solve the world's problems. <laughs> and you make me laugh. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> oh yeah. I get into arguments with my relatives through you. This window open. <laughs> you remember that one? Okay, we can't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love you with all my heart. Be safe. I love you too. Thank you. Be safe and take care of yourself. Bye, sweetie. Bye, Chris. Bye. Ah, so sweet. Okay. He's such a doll. 